Hi gang, you should see underneath here a notes that you're going to fill in as I go through this and we're going to talk about what we do when we work with samples. Suppose we want to know the percentage of teenagers who like broccoli. Yuck! Now, when you fill in the blanks, what we're looking for then is we're looking for, we're going to have to gather a sample. A sample pen is not working correctly. A sample contains information from only part of a population. The population would be all teenagers. We're not, we can't go around and ask all teenagers. We can only ask a certain number of them. So that becomes our sample. In a sample of 300 teenagers, 72 say that they like broccoli. So if we get our calculators out and we do 72 divided by 300, which is going to be 24, that's 24%. We call that a sample proportion, which makes sense because it is the sample of, it is the proportion, sorry, the proportion of our sample who said that they like broccoli. All right, so we have that good. Now, in a random sample, now if we're taking a simple random sample, so we call that an SRS, simple random sample, each member of the sample is equally likely to be chosen. And that's the best kind of sample, is to do a simple random sample where everybody has an equally likely chance to be chosen. A sample proportion, whenever you're reporting a sample proportion, like that 24% up there, we should always report that with an estimate of the error, which we call the margin of error. Now, how do we calculate the margin of error? The margin of error is given by a real simple formula, 1 divided by the square root of n, where n is the sample size. So if we go back to our broccoli example, this means we're reasonably sure, so we need to calculate this. So we had 24%, right, that was our sample proportion, plus or minus our margin of error, which is going to be 1 divided by the square root of 300. So again, I'm going to get my calculator so that I can divide 1 divided by 300, 1 divided by the square root of 300, and I get 0 0.0557. So my margin of error then, I'll put it underneath here just to show you, is 5.7%. So my range, my sample interval then, would be 24% plus 5.7, which would be 29 0.7%, and we would also have to do 24 minus 5.7, which is going to be 18.3%. So that's our sample interval. This means that in our broccoli example, we are reasonably sure that between 18.3% and 29.7% of all teenagers like broccoli. In our sample, we got 24%, but we know that our sample is only a part of the population, so I'm not comfortable saying that I'm confident that 24% of all teenagers like broccoli, but with the margin of error, I'm able to say that I'm pretty confident that between 18.3 and 29.7% of all teenagers like broccoli. It gives us a much bigger range that we can be more confident about. Let's do one more example. Now, voter registration is a big topic in the news this week because the midterm elections are coming up. Both parties are really focused on getting out the vote. And one of the reasons for this is because Americans have a history of poor voter turnout for these off-year elections. So one poll, CNN poll or a Gallup poll or some sort of poll, asked 1,700 people were selected at randomly and asked if they voted in the last election. 795 said yes. Let's see what this means. Let's interpret this. So 795 out of 1,700. This is our sample proportion. So if I give my calculator out, 795, that's going to be 46.7, we'll round up, 
0.8%. Now my margin of error. My margin of error is going to be 1 divided by the square root of 1,700. Right? That's how many people were in the poll was 1,700. So 1 divided by the square root of 1,700. That's going to give me plus or minus. We always do margin of errors with plus or minus. 2.4%. So now I just need to add. So I need to add and subtract. So if I do 46.8 minus 2.4, that's going to give me 44.4. That's my lower estimate. And if I do 46.8 plus 2.4, 49.2, that's my upper estimate. So that means I'm fairly confident that between 44.4% and 49.2% of Americans voted in the last election. And that's how you do margin of error. So what I'd like for you to do next is you can read the part on the bottom, and it talks you through it and tells you where to submit it, and good luck.